covered the major aspects of the theory. Now what I would like to do is use uh, a few examples and just show you um, some, some really neat stuff about how this works. So the first thing I'm going to show is a simple access example. I'm just going to bring up access and give you a quick recap. Much of this duplicates what Ian gave, um, and so it's already in the re recording from last December. But this will just give you a sample. In access, unlike Excel, in Excel you're using a query processor to select specific fields, set up the linkages, and bring that back into the query processor, which then reformulates it and passes it back into um, into um, Excel as the rows and columns that, you sell, that you've seen. In Access, what happens is since it itself is a database, the fundamental unit that you're looking at are the tables. And Access actually supports two tables. One of them is a linkage table. So for example, this one here. That's a linkage table, and that represents any changes. I mean, uh, that's really a direct pipe back into the PBS. So again, if I went into this particular copy and changed this, just like I did at the opening example, if I went in and, and um, this is going after a different database, so it's, it's not updated to the way we left it. Um, but if I went into that copy of PBS, made the change to the vendor, and then came back here and refreshed, this, this field would have been changed. So we've now, with, with the, with the um, with the linkage tables, we're actually looking at the full vendor file, un unvarnished data directly out of PBS. And so it goes on and on and on and on. We have no choice on the fields, and we see it goes on and on and on. And that's true for most of the master files. They've got dozens and dozens of fields to cover all of the stuff that you might want. And typically in Excel, you're selecting those fields, but in Access, you're making a connection to the table itself, and so you're getting all the fields. The other option is you can actually have Access get at the data and copy it. So that's what I've done here with the, the open item file. So again, the issue is all of the fields on and on and on and on for the, for the AP open item file. However, in this case, this is a native mode Access table. And the difference is this has now been copied once and won't be updated. We've now taken a snapshot of where PBS was, whereas this one is basically a tube, a straw, so to speak, back into the, the drink, which is PBS. And any time we want to update it, all we have to do is refresh the data, and we've drawn out the, the liquid from PBS. We've drawn out the data from PBS. So how do we get back to where we kind of were with Excel, which is specific rows and columns? Well, what we do in Access, and this is not supposed to be a course in Access, but just to give you a general feel, is we create queries. And a query now comes back to looking like something more like what we were looking at in Excel. So once again, we have our tables up here. We have linkages and we have down below the various fields that we want to work with. Now the layout is a little bit different and there's some additional fields, additional functionality here. For instance, I can sort in my query by, by just putting in values in here and so on and so forth. But the, but the fact is my basic relationship is I've got a vendor file and I've got a vendor history file. I've got a linkage between them and um, we've got the same kind of relationship issues that we might have had before, one-to-many, one-to-one. And we then choose the fields just like we do in the Excel query. And when we're done choosing those fields, we now have something that looks very much like Excel, except this is a database. So this is now considered a table as far as SQL or a table as far as, far as SQL queries are, are concerned. So we can then include this in something else. And the way we can do this, or one of the useful ways we can do this, is to include it in a report. So I can then run this report, which is based on that query. And basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the fields, but now I'm including the data to put in headers, to put titles. I can do subtotals. All of that sort of stuff is based on the query. So again, Fred's question was very good. 
Um, and I gave him um, three quarters of an answer. The other quarter of the answer is, if you do this in Access, the query functions that are equivalent to Excel are covered primarily by the query itself. There's not an exact correspondence, but there's a pretty rough, pretty good correspondence between those two. So this is kind of like what you would get with um, when you when you do a query in Excel. You get that data. You can do additional things in Excel with a bit of effort, but this is basically the data. In um, in Act in Access, you can then build a report on top of that that then gives you this data and allows you to do those additional subtotalings different kinds of filtering and different kinds of calculations. Because just like I showed you in Crystal, this reporting function will allow me to do calculations. So for example, if I was looking at an order entry function and I wanted the extended price of quantity and price, I could take those two, multiply them, and put them back in the report here as a calculated field. So that's, that's an example of access and the database going after that. <laughs>